board uh, so that I've got that going. And today's lesson is number 23 in A Course of Miracles. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of the lessons uh, that I've covered over the last two weeks other than yesterday's. So, um, because that was a big one and, um, you know, leading into it was how we left things, uh, on Friday with, I'm determined to see, and then on Monday, I'm determined to see things differently. And Jason shared a great story with us about how he chose to see things differently, uh, on Monday, Tuesday with, uh, his interaction with his daughter and her shopping. And, uh, and that was such a great example of that, right? It's just, it's a choice and a determination we make. And then yesterday, um, the lesson was, uh, this one is the, what I see as a form of vengeance. So that was an interesting lesson. And the takeaway yesterday was uh, pretty in depth as far as what we asked you to do. Um, I'm just curious, did anyone have anything they wanted to share from that lesson yesterday uh, about, uh, about how that shows up? That, you know, really in how we think, we think we're going the right direction because we, we think that we're on the defense because of the way we choose to see things and it's really that we created the need to be defensive uh, by uh, by how we see things and then that those questions I asked you to look at throughout the day yesterday I thought were really powerful ones and I'm just kind of curious whether you had a chance to work with those and I'm going to go to that slide uh, just um, uh, let's see just because I, I did spell those out for us yesterday I want to make sure that you can see those. Um, no, maybe I don't have them any longer. I'm going to apologize if I did that because um, it was a little in depth. Uh, here we go. Uh, let me see if I can get that to pop up there. Uh, this one, right? So that that idea was uh, to, to say to yourself, you know, and this was a specific. Remember, the lesson was five times a day, at least a minute. Uh, as you look around wherever you're at in that time, I see only uh, I see only the perishable, um, and then I see nothing that will last. And what I see is not real. And the last one was this one, what I see is a form of vengeance. Now, this is, I don't know about you guys, this is a tough, um, this was a tough lesson, I think. Um, and it was tough for me. Uh, I, did I stop my screen share? I think I did, didn't I? Because I just lost my, um, my control panel somewhere. Um, shoot. Uh, let's see, Darren, why is the control panel gone? Here we go. Now, now I'm back. Um, so uh, anyone have anything that they wanted to share from that? I'm, I was trying to get that this, the slide up so you could see it. Um, there we go. Now I'm back to where I can control things. <laughs> any, uh, any thoughts on, um, on that lesson as you practiced it? That's the question I guess I have for you today. And I'm going to put the questions back up on the screen for you um, from yesterday. Any thoughts or questions or things that happened for you? Because I'll, well, te I'll tell you, it was not easy for me. Darren, it's Nancy. Nancy. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of intermingle intermingling the words vengeance and competitive. You know, what I thought was competitive is that me being vengeful. You know, I don't know. And so how did it show up as you did that, though? Was there anything specific that happened during a practice session or at some point through the day yesterday where that kind of reappeared for you? Um, it's over a well agreement and the neighbor, uh, my buyer wanting to get a formal agreement with the neighbor. It's all just willy nilly right now. And... Um, you know, we Googled what we thought would be fair for a yearly amount to charge. And the neighbor came back just on the attack. Hmm. And I was shocked. And so there was, was something about it that kind of set them off. In, in yeah. what the proposal was. So they got vengeful. And um, I just, you know, I called the other realtor and I said, wow, you know, this got out of hand and I'm not even going to put this in front of my buyer because I don't want him thinking his new neighbors, Interesting, you know, yeah. are this angry. So I'd rather they get along. So yeah, I don't know. So I want to be competitive and win for my buyer, but there's no way I'm going to put him up against this. So it'd be interesting to know what it was with, well, first off the communication with the neighbor, how was that done? 
to, to get this uh, attempted? Was it from the current home or property owner to the neighbor or was it with the agent to the neighbor? Do you know? Um, I think it was the current owner. Again, you know, we Googled what it costs, you know, in kilowatt hours to run the average well. Yeah. This is a joint well, hey, $48 a year, you know, period. And it, it maybe insulted that, that property owner, so that was the reaction they gave you, which was a strong one? They're elderly, one's only taking sponge baths now, we don't use that much, you know, water. I'm like, oh my gosh, if we get this separately metered, you know what it's gonna cost you then? Yeah, yeah. Interesting, isn't it? You know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that happen potentially. That's why I asked how the communication was done because until you know what, what had them react so strongly, it's going to be a difficult one to try to get to agreement on, isn't it? I wonder it about just, this. I wonder yeah. if, there's a va if there's value in your client reaching out directly to that, that property owner and just having a neighbor to future neighbor conversation. Uh, the listing realtor is going to try to reach out. I believe the seller is as well. And again, I really don't want buyer even knowing that this happened. I'm hoping yeah, to smooth it over first. Me. I get it. I get it. And I, yeah, I, just, I don't know if there's... So how did that show up when we looked at these questions, though? So I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. And what I see is a form of vengeance. How did that kind of show up for you in this scenario? Well, again, number four is the one that, you know, I kind of am able to relax on it, but then number four, what I see is a form of vengeance. So that one I'm getting stuck on. So here's the thing maybe to think about with that, because um, how, how we label what happens is really what the experience becomes. And so the label you've created or the filter you've created for that adjacent property owner's reaction might be the thing to look at. Because I could play devil's advocate, for lack of a better uh, term, and just say, well, Nancy, you know, I, I, could, I could see it from where they're coming from as the people next door. Um, so what we what we what we're working towards in this example is to say how do we get to a spot where there's commonality and we can really get to some agreement. But the label I'm giving it might be different. I don't know. I mean that's that's the thing that I always look at though, and and I think I go I'll go back to uh, what Jason shared about how he was with his 15 year old daughter when he was letting her do this whole shopping thing and it was getting him worked up and he just chose. To let it to look at it differently is there a different way that could be looked at that could get you the result that you desire just i don't know that you, you'll have an answer i'm just kind of tossing it there for you does that make sense absolutely and it, again my intent is to just try and smooth it over with the neighbors hey you know this was not meant to offend you perfect you know that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's a direct conversation either you or your buyer has with them because there's nothing contractually that says you can't approach the property owner next door, right? You're, there's no violation of anything. The, 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 the route you took initially made sense because you would think the relationship is between the current owner and the, and the adjacent owner. But maybe it isn't. You know, who knows? And we don't know how they approached them. So they just another way to look at it. So. So I'm gonna. Uh, I love that you're 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 taking the lessons though that we're bringing each day, and you're and you're taking them out into practice in you, in the daily in what you do daily, because that's what this is, and and not knowing um, is okay, and I can't give you an answer because it's different for all of us. You're going through your journey with this, and I've got mine. Uh, I will tell you that uh, my le this lesson twenty two was a little. Uh, defeating feeling like like um, if everything I see is perishable nothing will last what I see is not real and what I see is in a form of vengeance I'm like this is kind of this is this sucks <laughs> that's that's how it was for me when I did the practice sessions yesterday and I had a lot of stuff going a lot of stuff going on yesterday and, and I was very intentional about this and I'm like well, it did it left me kind of in a weird spot 
which is part of why I'm grateful that this fell in the middle of a week so that I didn't have three days of those questions because I'm gonna, we're gonna keep peeling this onion. So today, um, today's lesson then uh, is another part of that, or another look at that, uh, at this to some extent. Um, and I'm just gonna get us caught up there on slides. Here we go, yeah. So lesson 23 is this one. It says, I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. So this is gonna to start to give us some opportunity for some resolution on this to, to some extent. So it says the idea for today that I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts contains the only way out of fear that will ever succeed. So that's a powerful first statement in the lesson, right? The idea for today that I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts contains the only way out of fear that will ever succeed. Since nothing else will work, everything else then is meaningless. But this way that I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts cannot fail. Every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. It is with your thoughts then that we must work. If your perception of the world is to be changed, so this, is, this may start to give some light or shed some light on everything we've worked on so far. Um, if the cause of the world you see is your attack thoughts, you must learn that it is these thoughts which you do not want. There is no point in lamenting the world that you perceive. There is no point in lamenting the world that you perceive. There is no point in trying to change the world that you perceive. The world that you perceive is incapable of change because the world that you perceive is merely an effect of your attack thoughts. An effect uh, so of your attack thoughts. So that's a big statement too, right? So, but there, uh, but there is indeed a point in changing your attack thoughts about the thoughts. Uh, let me say that again. I, I, I skipped a line. So, but there is indeed a point in changing your attack thoughts about the world. Sorry, because that, that didn't make sense to me. And I'm like, wait a minute, I would have caught that before. So, so here's the thing. There is indeed a point in changing your attack thoughts about the world. Here, you are changing the cause of the world that you perceive, which is your attack thoughts. The effect, which is your vengeful world that you perceive, will change then automatically. So, it's, you know, change your thinking, change your world for my bold grads. It's kind of a, that's the simplistic form of what I just read to you. The world you see is a vengeful world and everything in it is a symbol of vengeance. Each of your perceptions of quote unquote external reality is a pictorial representation of your own attack thoughts. One can well ask if this perception of quote external reality, which is the result of your mind's own pictorial representation of your own attack thoughts, can be called seeing. Is not fantasy a better word for such a process of projecting your own attack thoughts outside your mind and, and hallucinations uh, a more appropriate term for the result of a vengeful world that you perceive you see? A vengeful world that you perceive that you see. You see the world that you have made, you see the world that you have made but you do not see yourself as the image maker. You cannot be saved from the world you perceive. However, you can escape from your perceived world's cause, which is your egoic mind's attack thoughts. Your mind's attack thoughts are the real image maker. Now, this is what salvation means. For where is the world that you see when it's cause, which is your attack thoughts, is gone. So if we eliminate that, what happens? Well, see, vision already holds a replacement for everything you think you see now. Loveliness can light your images and so transform your images that you will love them, even though your images were made of hate. For you will not be making your images alone. So it's just change your thinking, change your world, change how you're perceiving things to be and see what happens. So the idea for today that I can escape the world I see by giving up attack thoughts introduces the thought that you are not trapped in the world that you see because your perceived world's cause can be changed. This change requires first that the cause, which is your attack thoughts, 
be identified, and then the second step is to let go so that your thoughts can then be replaced. Um, the first step in this process, identifying the cause and then letting it go, requires some cooperation. So the final one, which uh, is the images you perceive does not uh, require uh, any other cooperation. So you create those images yourself. So your images that you perceive have already been replaced. By taking the first two steps, you will see that this is so and that the images that you have perceived have already been replaced. So I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go back and touch that again because I think it's important to really understand the steps. Besides using the idea that I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts, throughout the day as the need arises, five separate practice periods are required in applying today's ideas. So five practice periods is what we're going to ask for. As you look about you in your practice period, repeat the idea that I can escape the world I see by giving up my attack thoughts slowly to yourself first, then close your eyes and devote about a minute to searching your mind for as many attack thoughts as occur to you. Each attack thought crosses your mind as it does. Say this, I can escape from the world I see by giving up my attack thoughts about blank. So whatever that one is that shows up. Yeah, so Nancy, in your example, maybe it's the competitiveness about winning a deal. That might be what it is. And so that's what you would identify it as. Hold each attack thought in, in mind as you say this, right? That I can escape from the world I see by giving up the attack thoughts about whatever that one is. And then dismiss that attack thought and go on to the next attack thought. So just dismiss it. The whole goal is that we're going to start rewriting all of this. So in the practice periods, be sure that you include both your thoughts of attacking and of being attacked. Because remember, we talked about that yesterday, right? We, we justify, we, we say we go on the defense because our attack thoughts come back around to attack us. And then we justify that it's the right thing to do because it's defensive. We start it. Uh, so by, so their, their effects are exactly the same because your thoughts of attacking and being attacked are exactly the same. You do not recognize the similarity as of yet, and you are asked at this time only to treat your thoughts of attacking and being attacked as the same thing. So don't try to sort them or, or parse them out in any way different. We are still in the stage of identifying the cause of the world that you see. That's, that's, that's just part of that. When, when you finally learn that thoughts of attack and being attacked are not different, you will be ready to let the cause go. Threw a lot at you. So we've got just a few minutes, so, but I just wanted to, so I want to go back to um, the, the paragraph that was a little confusing, I think. Uh, it was for me the first couple times that I did this. It says, the idea today that I could escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts introduces the thought that you are not trapped in the world you see because your perceived world's cause can change or can be changed, right? So that's what we're doing. We're, we're working to start changing that. This change requires first that the cause, which is your attack thought, be identified, and then the second step is let go. So your attack thought can then be replaced. Only in doing that, though, can you replace those thoughts. So the first two steps in this process, identifying the cause and letting it go, requires your cooperation. You have to be willing to do it. The final one, which is the images that you perceive does not require your cooperation. They're there already. They're just waiting to replace those attack thoughts. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as you start doing this because you'll start discovering that there may be something really, really wonderful behind this once you've cleared them out. So any questions about this? So five times today, about a minute each time, start out slowly searching for what the attack thought might be whether it's attacked out or being attacked. Walk through that exercise. It says, I can escape by giving up this, the attack thought of this. And then give thought to it, let it go. Give it up. It's gone. And let's see what happens. So any thoughts, questions, or comments? I love this. I love this. This, uh, this lesson today is, is a turning point, or could be. For some, and again, it's different for everybody, but um, I'm a, I, I like results. It's kind of how I'm wired. So this finally gives me a, a process to start that. So I'm excited about it. All right, guys, if there's anything else, I'll let you uh, head on out for the day. Have an awesome day. We'll be back at 9 o'clock tomorrow with lesson number 24. 
lesson number 24, um, and uh, have an awesome day. See you then. Bye, everybody.